Good morning and welcome to St. Luke's on this beautiful Sunday morning. We're so pleased you are with us, with your families, and if you're on your own, we are glad you're with us and sharing this beautiful Sunday together. Let's quieten our hearts as we come into God's presence and as we worship Him together. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth His praise, to hear His Holy Word, and to ask for ourselves and on, the, on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship Him. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Bind Us Together, Lord.
Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Our Old Testament lesson is from Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Hera after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah will have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh, yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have ever said that to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 116, 1, 10 to 17. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation 
and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am the servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. The epistle is from Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for, the righteous, for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel song is a choir anthem, P.A. Yesu.
The Holy Gospel of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out the demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey. Two tunics or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. And as you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But, it is, but if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me. As a testimony to them and the Gentiles, when they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. One of the most stressful things about preparing for a trip is packing. What type of clothes should you bring? What necessary items should you pack? Or what could you pick up at the other end? If traveling by car, what snacks, music, and other entertainment should you bring? Will you need an umbrella? These are the things we think about. 
But changes in security over the past decade have made packing even more of a chore. Making sure all those bottles are less than three fluid ounces. And then do you have a quart size Ziploc bag? You have to check the pockets of the carry-on for the stray embroidery scissors or a corkscrew. Yes, that has happened in TSA. Do you limit what you take in order to carry on or do you pay the extra $50? When it's all said and done, you need a vacation just to get over the stress of packing. Currently, because of the pandemic, some airlines have a no carry-on uh, policy. And so no carry-ons are, uh, are permitted due to the pandemic uh, conditions. So now we cannot even have our carry-ons. We can't even do that. We have to check all our baggage, even our carry-ons. But I don't imagine that many of us will be traveling this summer. 2020 is the year of the great staycation. In our gospel reading today, Jesus makes packing for a trip and taking the gospel out easy. He makes it easy. He makes our journey easy. Actually, he makes it a complete non-issue. He says, don't take anything. Just don't take anything. Go in the clothes that you are wearing with only the pair of shoes on your feet. That, my friends, is the ultimate version of packing light. I wonder, can you imagine yourself as one of the disciples? What would challenge you most about taking this journey, this journey that Jesus was sending them on? There are many reasons why Jesus had issued this challenge, but for us today, perhaps what is most relevant is that Jesus is also calling us on a journey. He doesn't want us to be encumbered with lots of baggage. Instead, he wants us to go out and serve using the gifts that he has equipped us with, the gifts he has given us. He changes the focus from the external and any excuses we might make to what the Spirit provides as we step out in faith. As we prayerfully reflect on this, we are preparing to step out in faith as we seek justice and love mercy and walk humbly with our God. And we will follow the Spirit's leading and serve as God's hands and feet in our communities. A great silence has been broken. And we are standing alongside our black brothers and sisters and seeking healing and reconciliation. It feels vulnerable and it feels scary. And none of us has all the answers. Yet we are stepping out in faith, emptying, emptying ourselves of arrogance and what we thought we knew and trusting the Holy Spirit to guide us through. Or back to our reading. It's worth noting that one of the reasons Jesus sends out the disciples with no resources is so that they will understand that any hospitality that they receive and any success they have in the mission is actually a gift. It is a gift. The disciples are able to heal, liberate, and transform lives, not through their own resources or abilities. They are very aware that they have nothing. And so they know that their success comes solely from the one in, whom, in whose name they were sent. When God calls us and we go forward with nothing, then all of our success must be attributed to God. We tend to believe that our success depends on what we bring to the table. We don't know how to travel light, relying solely on God. We want to hold on to everything we have and take it with us, because without it, what are we? Without our luxuries and comforts, our homes, cars and credit cards, and all our stuff, how will anyone know to take us 
to take us seriously. That stuff somehow makes us feel worthy. It makes us feel important, deserving of attention, respect, and hospitality. Yet we are so weighed down with it all, that it's no wonder that we don't get very far. Also, if we feel too comfortable, we are less likely to move forward, aiding others in their discomfort. Let's look again at the instructions Jesus gives to the disciples. He says, enter a town and stay where you are welcomed. Eat what is given to you. Show compassion and care. Proclaim that the kingdom of God is near. And that's it. That's all he tells them to do. No discussion about what type of reward you should receive. No focus on getting what you need or want. It's all about being generous recipients. Focus on what has been given, not on what you would like to receive. Well, the disciples do it, and their lives are transformed. And the disciples do it, and the kingdom of God is seen a little clearer. They packed light, stepped out in faith, and learned that God truly, truly does provide. Today, Jesus invites us to walk with him. There is still the urgent need to bring God's kingdom near, perhaps even more so now in our current world climate. 2020 continues to be unlike anything we have ever experienced. So Jesus calls us to pack light. We don't need all that stuff. It just gets in the way and becomes another idol to worship. It's a radical and risky idea to let go of everything we own and accept the mission. Yet look at what we have done. Look at what we have done. I can't believe it that I've been leading St. Luke's virtually longer than I met with you in person. I just can't believe that. I've actually all my life avoided being on Skype calls and cameras and FaceTime with the kids and being on video because I just don't like it. It's hard. and I feel like my head looks like a soccer ball when um, I'm on that big camera. But now it's the only way that we can safely connect. So here I am, and I'm doing it, and God has called me in a new way. It's wonderful. So we are being stretched to grow into something new as we rely on God, because we don't know what else to do. And actually, that's a very good place to be. God is shaping St. Luke's into an even healthier church. A church that responds to the needs of our local community and our nation and our world. As we journey in pursuit of justice and mercy and love, it is important that we keep our motives pure and that we remember that any success and growth be credited to God. Because it is in the power of his Holy Spirit that we are able to serve. When God calls us and we go forward with nothing, then all of our success must be attributed to him, attributed to God. If we choose to stay in our comfortable zones, if we refuse to get our hands dirty and our hearts change, then we risk missing the exciting and empowering journey that requires nothing but faith in God to sustain us. We risk missing the kingdom of God that has already come near in Jesus Christ. So today, let's recommit our whole selves to God, who will lead us on unexpected adventures as we trust him to use us to make a difference in this community.
May we let go of anything that slows us down or holds us back and step out in faith as we serve together in him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the, Holy, by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the, le the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And our collect for today. Keep O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, on God, now and forever. Amen. And our collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favour. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for times of conflict. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us, in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth, to confront one another without hatred or bitterness, and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people. 
made righteous through faith in Christ, asking that we may be faithful to the gift of God's grace, let us now pray to our God in the power of the Spirit, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that in our prayer we may stand ready, as the Lord wills, to carry out and accomplish the very prayer we utter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the urgency of God's word of blessing or curse will shatter our spirit of equivocation and compromise and our easy toleration of expediency and injustice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who bear the responsibility of government in every nation, that they may build upon the solid rock of truth and justice, and not upon the sands of self-interest and pride. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the word of Christ may become the deepest joy in our hearts, and may move us to deeds which reflect Christ's ministry of reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in the human community who cry out because of injustice, oppression, illness, or isolation, that we may hear them in them the cry of Christ himself suffering in his brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, Pray for the Anglican Church of Nigeria. In the World Council of Churches cycle of prayer, pray for the people of Angola and Mozambique. In the Kansas cycle of prayer, pray for St. Paul's, Manhattan. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those serving in the armed forces, Devin Allen, Murphy Bright, Ben Dival, Coy Goodman, Michael Green, Harvey Hazelton, Drew Honeycutt, Benjamin Karpensky, Patrick McInerney, Alex Shaw, Jose Teo, Brian Weichel, Colin Kelly, Macaulay Garten, Frank Bedner, and Grant Bedner, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the homebound, Joanne Sherman, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For strength and health, for Maxine Jones, Mililani Hazelton, Courtney Canova, Sharon Sinelli, Curtis Smith, Dixie Moss, Sandy Blasick, James Johan, Maxine Leapst, Elizabeth Appleyard, Frankie Woodman, Adam Greest, Barbie Steelman, Roger Aton, Craig and Jeanette Burris, Anthony Straker, Jack Harris, Spike Spiker, the Jaquish family, the Hoffman family, Lawrence Kirkland, Michael Siragusa, Jean McDowell, Maxine Haverfield, Ken Hogue, Matt Honeycutt, Joanne Divini, Geraldine, Richard Mann, Don Hoffman, Patricia Miller, and the Navajo Nation. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For birthdays, Matrick, uh, Matthew Canabal, Luke Granjanet, Shannon Mandalay, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the departed, that they may continue to support us in the, with their love in the communion of saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal and compassionate God, receive and fulfill all that we ask according to your will. Give us the grace to welcome your word, who is Christ, that we may live grounded on the rock of your love and mercy, now and in all our days. 
We ask this through Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. We want to wish our birthday folk a very happy birthday. That's Matthew and Luke and Shannon. And we pray for them and say the birthday prayer together now. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal and compassionate God, receive and fulfill all that we ask according to your will. Give us the grace to welcome your word, who is Christ that we may live grounded on the rock of your love and mercy, now and all our days. We ask this through Christ our Saviour and Redeemer. Amen. Now we are going to share the peace. I've put this in this part of the service because I want us to be close together and share the peace of Christ together as St. Luke's. And we can take that peace out into the world as well. So we are saying the peace to each other and to everyone. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And our offertory sentence Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to all. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for, your, for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And a prayer of Saint Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for worshipping with us this morning at St. Luke's. It's been great to have you here. And uh, one day I'll come to your homes and maybe able to see where we've been uh, uh, sharing this service. It'll be great to do that one day. I really pray that uh, sooner than we realize. After the service at 11, we have our coffee hour. Um, we'd love for you to come to that. Please do find the link. It'll be emailed to you. And just click on that and you can come in. And we have a wonderful time. And Cheryl leads a, a group session where we go off into groups and discuss things. And it's a lot of fun. Please do come and join in that. We'd love to have you there. Then we have our noon refresher. That's at 12.30 on Wednesdays. And Karen does a lovely service, a noonday service. And we talk about the things we need prayer for and our friends and families. And it's a wonderful time of coming together. So please do come to that. Again, the email will be sent to you with the Zoom uh, address. So please do click on that. On Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, we have our movie evening. And we're looking at a very special movie. It's called Just Mercy. Please watch that beforehand if you can. I know many of us have already. And it's a really good movie. And we will be discussing the content of that film uh, together, that movie together. And we'd love for you to be there. Please do click on the link for that meeting on Wednesday evening. And we'd love to see you. On Friday, we have our cookery evening. And we're going to have a cooking time together. And that will be led on Zoom. So again, please do click on the link for that. And that will be emailed to you as well. And please come along to that. And we will be cooking something. Not sure what it is yet, but it's going to be great. And we really look forward to seeing you then. Have a wonderful week. If you need anything, Karen and I are here. Please call us and contact us, and we will be there for you. God bless you all. Thank you.